everybody, this is Jackie Jing with CGG and I am with the Pengu. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So we obviously want to talk to you about SI 2020 and a lot of people saying dramatically that this is the nail in the coffin for the G2 legacy. What's your response to that? I mean, we believe that it died a long time ago uh, for multiple reasons. One was performance uh, drop, which meant that we couldn't really maintain our own reputation and expectations. And second of all, was the, the change to the core of the roster, not having Dunas, not having Goga anymore. We don't see ourselves as the same team we were before. And obviously, with both replacing Goga for Kran and then Kran for Sabah very recently, it's hard to say what team we are because we kind of changed identity so much the last couple of months. That's interesting um, that you're talking about changing identities. Um, teams evolve, they rise, they fall. Um, I don't want to compare you to, to anybody because obviously you're your own team, but Evil Geniuses, they're a team that, you know, they were on top for a long time and now we are trying, or we're starting to see a fall with them. What do you think is the future for G2? I think, I think it's very interesting because I think EG should have changed everything dramatically when they started seeing a negative effect. Whereas they were like, we're just going to keep grinding, keep going through the hardship together as brothers, as teammates, etc. And they have just not found success in Where when we started feeling any sort of, um, I guess, too much comfortability or too in inconsistent performance, we're like, oh, let's change something, right? And that's kind of where the Junish change came from, the Goga change came from, among other th reasons, was that if you get too complacent and too comfortable in your position, you will never know if you have a bigger potential elsewhere with other people. And you could argue that it was a mistake to do the things that we did, but we don't truly know that until the hindsight kicks in, right? After we we've done the deal. And um, we you always want to be looking for alternatives for better positions, players, situations, um, even if you're the best team in the freaking world, how do you stay, you know, on top of the game, right? And that's a, a, a part, um, a mixture of getting new talent, maintaining talent, and of course, always looking for every possibility. So evolving, that was a really good answer. Um, so I do want to talk to you about your performance against NIP, not one of your best. Um, <laughs> t talk to me about what happened there. It was statistically my worst game in, in more than two years, arguably. Uh, I, f I know that DreamHack won trial for me last year uh, was a terrible event for me as an individual, but I actually think I might have ended up performing better that event than here, or against NIP at least. Um, I think we kind of sold ourselves very short and kind of lost before the game actually ended. I think that the last game that we had for real was against Fnatic. I think that's kind of where our, our tournament ended here. Uh, it was a hard loss for us, and we had a lot of hardships uh, afterwards as a team. Like, what went wrong? How can we fix it? What do we do going forward? And we tried a different style where instead of being extremely engaged and being very vocal and very, you can almost say, uh, like shouting in excitement, we would try against an IP to go very, let's have really clear, crystal calm, calms, and just like flow. And we didn't find the flow, so all we had was silence, and all of a sudden that it all falls apart, right? Mm -hmm. So we we're trying to juggle out what we could do better, and we end up becoming worse because of it, I guess. Almost like trying so hard not to lose, almost. I, I do think there's a degree of uh, failure, um, being afraid of failure, mm -hmm. um, coming from where we were, and I think in the beginning of the tournament we had no pressure really. We had really a lot of fun in the first game against Reciprocity. We played uh, Fuse. Monty and Glass against BDS. We played Tashanga against BDS. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> and and for some reason, uh, once we got to knockoff stage, uh, I think the pressure kind of kicked in subconsciously. And I think that's a big shift in our performance and our communication and, and kind of what happened. Okay, so I also want to ask you about something you tweeted about. Um, it was actually about NIP and Fnatic and how they were your scrim partners. <laughs> and you were like, this sweet, is just ironic. Karma. Yeah. yeah. No, Can you is. elaborate on that? We've always kind of scrimmed quote-unquote underdogs because one, you don't expect to play them ever because they are going to get knocked out, right? That's one thing. And two, because there's so much unforeseen potential in those teams and they kind of just get pushed aside by all the teams, I think. Fnatic have done this fantastic thing where they started boot camping for one or two, maybe two and a half weeks in Europe before going to a big event. And they have really, really mastered that and they've done, it's done so much for them. And so when they were in London, we were in Berlin, we were both boot camping, we scrimmed them I think almost daily for, for like five days. Um, and then when we came here, again, like Fnatic, why not, right? We're not in the same group. Mm -hmm. And then NIP was like, oh, can you guys warm us up? And then MRBR was like, can you warm us up as well? So we actually screamed MRBR, NIP, and uh, Fnatic a lot. And you learn a lot of things that are unorthodox to your own region because mm -hmm. they play a different play style. And in hindsight, 
I wish we didn't because we're not facing them, of course. But on the other side, we learned so much from them that you can argue that the reason why we came out on top against reciprocity and against BDS was because of those teams. Interesting. Okay. Um, I also want to talk to you about um, bringing on Sir Boss. And, you know, we've heard the Twitterverse on both sides of this. And people are like, what the heck? And then other people are like, okay, this is actually a good choice. I do want to know what you thought about all of it. We call him Sir Bob. That's the first thing, okay? <laughs> Sir Bob. Uh, when he joined, we're like, Sir Boss, Hugo Boss, Sir Bob. Like, we tried all these things because his name is Frank. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, we can't call you Frank. This just doesn't work. <laughs> so, Sir Bob is the name. And when we initially replaced Goga, who's one of the most likable personas within Siege, it is, you cannot replace that person, right? You can put another face and a name on top of it, but you're not going to actually replace that person ever. He's so liked by everyone, uh, which he should be. And he's a great teammate, a friend for many years. And um, we replaced him with a more aggressive player in Crying, thinking that we could do a more aggressive playstyle and kind of build this new way of playing the game. It, we just, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, then we forced Crown on a hard support, which was completely against his nature. So, of course, he had a terrible performance. That's us um, forcing that. And then we're like, okay, we need a free agent who can play hard support, who's played professionally before because big pressure, mm -hmm. but also someone who isn't too bothered by possibly having really poor showing because you're gonna just be joining a team with 12 days of practice going to the biggest event ever and we might flop because we weren't doing so hot before he joined. And Sipa has turned everything around for us. Like we went from like doing terribly in scrims to smashing scrims. We found our, I think our core values and our roles in the game. And he just, he just learned everything on the flight to our boot camp. Mm -hmm. Cause we spoke to him, I think two days before we flew out. Short notice, yeah. The day before we flew out, that's when the contract, like the loaning contract got finalized. And we sent him like some documents with the flight and he was like, oh, I know, I, I, I studied everything guys, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just, he meshed really well with us. So um, can you talk a little bit about what happened with crying? You mentioned it, but it sounds like you guys were trying about a, a bunch of different options out, but you said something just didn't click. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit more. It's hard to say. It's like we actually expected to do really, really well. Just like, you know, someone that could pull better statistics than Goga perhaps, but and I, I could play more support, which I felt like I could do. It just didn't work out. And I, we honestly, to this day, don't know what the reason for that is because it, on paper, it looked like a really good team um, despite losing our hard support. And then we tried and it just it failed. Okay, and um, you guys have three support staff, correct? And um, that's a little bit atypical, a little bit more than what we see in other teams. Do you think that that helps a lot, how it affects? I mean, I would think it would help a lot, but I think it's just a little unorthodox, and we didn't see the success that we were expecting from your team here. So we just kind of wanted to see what you thought about having that bigger support staff. I can't speak from a direct comparison because I don't know what kind of internal support all teams have, but mm -hmm. I do know that from what I have seen and heard, our support staff is uncomparable to any other. You can, you can take four teams and combine them. They're nowhere near as good as our support staff. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a fully functional monster exo shit that you feed data that will automate. It's just crazy. It's ridiculous. Um, the issue is on the players, right? It's about taking information to the players, the players understand the information, and then execute it correctly. That's where the problem lies, if anything. Um, we do have three support staff, but it's not as excessive as it sounds because Shaz is actually a big manager uh, role right now. So it's not like we have a coach, an analyst, and a data analyst. No, no, we have a manager, which is very normal. And most teams have that these days, and a coach and an analyst, right? So it's not as crazy. Um, I think three support staff going forward would be the norm. Uh, and again, as I said, it's going to be a managing role, a coaching role, and an analyst role, not like two coaches and one analyst. Okay, now for the tough questions. <laughs> Who do you have taking the event? There, there's different ways to spin it, right? In okay. one way, the underdog in Fnatic, we love to see, like mm -hmm. go forward and just smash it this event. Mm -hmm. BDS is the savior of Europe, so mm -hmm. of course there's that. SSG as Troy Canadian, the only other person remaining that has ever won an Invitationals, I believe. Mm. That would be crazy if he yeah. lifted another one. And then we have TSM, which is like my personal fan like fan favorite. Like I just think that the way they play the game is, it, it's new, it's refreshing, and it's kind of one step ahead. And I think that if you get caught like in their pace and they get to dictate it, you're screwed. Like There's no way you're gonna bring it back. Um, and I think very few teams can actually deal with them. You didn't answer the question, who's taking it all? <laughs> who's taking it all? Okay, okay, let's be bold, let's be brave. So I'm gonna, <laughs> Okay, I'll narrow it down to two people, two okay, teams. I we'll cannot, I cannot do any better. I <laughs> think we'll have an SSG TSM Grand Final. 
Okay, North America. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. As much as I hate to say it, North America will win again. Okay, and then uh, last question here. It's, uh, you know, a big one. We would like you to do an impression of Canadian for us. Your best <laughs> Canadian impression, please. All right. Am I going to, like, blow people's ears out? I can move fix on a fix. <laughs> here, I'll move the mic back. Okay, okay. Here. Whoa! <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, you were fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you so much for doing the interview with us. You're awesome. All right, and for all of your Siege coverage, you know who to stick with, Siege GG.